Hello everyone, I am Julian Morris with the Channel 5 News. In the headlines, all students except Trafalgar Primary are currently back in the classroom. 18 million in grant funding for agriculture expected to stimulate increased production at grammar school and state college register wins in the under-20 football championships. The details coming up. Rudolph Thomas Enterprise in Portsmouth, your suppliers of building materials and hardware products. Over 20 years experience in the business. Rudolph Thomas has lumber and plywood, galvanized and fence pipe. Check out Rudolph Thomas for ceramic and vinyl floor and wall tiles, nails, nuts and bolts, paint and painting supplies. And check out their line of electrical and hand tools. Go now to Rudolph Thomas on 1240 Bay Street in Portsmouth. First up in the news, education officials are reporting that all students are back in the classroom except the students of Trafalgar Primary. The Trafalgar Primary School is still serving as a shelter for one family. Meantime, Form 1 and 2 students of the Dominica Grammar School could finally report for classes on Friday after all displaced people moved out of their building and the classrooms were sanitized. The Dominica Goodwill Primary is also offering classes to all its students due to its newly renovated auditorium building, which was customized into classrooms. Education Minister Peter Seja told the handing over ceremony at the Goodwill Primary School on Friday that he feels a sense of accomplishment. While we, have not, we may have not achieved very much, within the Ministry of Education, but I feel a sense of accomplishment because I'm happy to announce that as of this morning, 300 students of the Dominica Grammar School are now back at school full time. The first and second formers. We have finally achieved our goal of providing temporary housing accommodation or in excess of 20 families who were housed at the Dominica Grammar School. Sergio says the next mission is to resume classes at the early childhood centers. We owe a debt of gratitude to the Ministry of Social Services, the Ministry of Housing, and indeed the Cabinet of the Commonwealth of Dominica for working with us and ensuring that every Dominican child can be back at school. We have achieved getting all our students back at school, so all our primary and secondary students are back at school in one way, shape, or form of the, or the other. We are now tackling the early childhood level. In other news now, the education district worst hit by Hurricane Maria, while still facing some challenges, has successfully returned all children back into the classroom. That happened earlier this month. District Education Officer for the East, David Maxime, said that the Eastern District was among the areas most severely impacted and some school buildings are no longer fit for use. The Eastern District suffered immensely from Maria. There were a number of schools that presently now requires total demolition, um, save for a few schools, maybe from recollection to schools. Maybe you know, we're ready to start as soon as, you know, Maria passed because there were minimal damage except for water flooding and that kind of thing. But for many of the schools, roof and, and other damages were sustained and it was, it, was, it was extensive. I think looking at the, the assessment, the Eastern District may have suffered the, the worst of Maria. The Ministry of Education has been really pushing for the return of the students. We've done, we've done great in terms of returning the students to school and establishing a, a certain level of normalcy. For the Eastern District, the two last schools that were, you know, had not engaged the students started in January and we presently, I can report that, all of our students on the Eastern District are presently at school. One of the major problems affecting the return to a normal educational setting for the children was the use of school buildings as emergency shelters. That was our major challenge, getting the occupants out and getting the students back in. For example, I just mentioned two schools that had not engaged their students at all, Post Maria 
um, Warner Primary and um, Concord Primary. That was our major problem because getting the occupants out of the, of the, of the location so that we could engage the students was problematic in that the Ministry of Education worked with other arms of government, but you know the process of getting them out was really a challenge. However, I am pleased to report that in one of the students are back at school. However, in Concord, we had to enter sort of a coexistence with um, Concord and, St and, and um, West Stratmore Stevens. Maxime says while all children in that district are back at school, there are still other obstacles affecting their learning environment. In some cases where, for example, we have a shift system existing at Sally Bear for Sally Bear and, Concord and, and um, Atkinson, we have another shift system existing in Casabras, Casabras Secondary and Casabras Primary. Because of the, of the it, get, it gets really dark early and that poses a real problem so in most cases the students are, are at school say 4.30 by the time it's 5 it's already dark so that poses a problem the ministry has done its best to try to provide transportation for the students um, the tents are a major issue as well because of the heat and on days when it rains because of the type of flooring the water comes up through the flooring because there are chairs there and you'd well imagine after a while there would be holes and constant movement on the, on the plastic type of material. However, I try to impress on, on principals and staff that we really know we're close to normalcy, so we just try to make the best do with what we have. The Eastern Education District covers Warner to San Sauveur and up to Concord. And the Ministry of Agriculture expects a rapid increase in post-Maria production, with $18 million in government grant assistance being made available to farmers and fishers. On Thursday, the Ministry of Agriculture signed an agreement with the Aid Bank for an immediate stimulus grant for all farmers and fishers to buffer the short-term loss of income due to Hurricane Maria. The 7 million U.S. or 18 million EC dollars in grant funds are made available under the Disaster Vulnerable Response Project. The Agricultural Emergency Response Grant, or ARG, is a short-term mobilization response to the negative impact of Maria on the farming community. Farmers and fishers can use the funds for restoration of crops, livestock production, and fishing operations. 900 commercial beneficiaries will be awarded a fixed grant of 10,000 EC dollars per beneficiary, while 3,042 small commercial beneficiaries will be awarded grant of $3,000 per beneficiary. Farmers and fishers who have not met the above criteria will be given an amount of $1,000 per beneficiary. Prime Minister Skerritt has explained why the aid bank will be the agency paying out the checks to farmers and fishers. What we're seeking to do in the government system, because the government itself has to be self-critic, we recognize that some things, some things take too long and some things can get lost in the bureaucracy. And we do not, we do not create the bureaucracy, we inherited it. Um, and in many instances in the public service, you have one person having many, many responsibilities. So every opportunity we get to utilize any agency of the state to facilitate the government outreach programs will do so. And in respect to the grants to the farmers, we have recognized that the aid bank would be better disposed to facilitate the payments of the, the grants to the farmers in a quicker time frame than, than us. They have the staff, they have the structure, and they have the ability. And a significant percentage of the damage to property and loss of lives suffered during uh, disasters like Hurricane Maria is caused by rivers, raging rivers. But since Hurricane Maria, some of these waterways, including the Rosa River, have not been dredged due to lack of suitable equipment until now. The 
Prime Minister says government has just received a fleet of heavy equipment and job number one is to dredge the rivers. Here is how the Prime Minister characterized the issue at a press briefing this week. Their first order of business is to descend on the rivers in Dominica. Yeah. There's too many rivers that are posing serious danger to uh, lives and properties across Dominica. The Rosa River, uh, the people on the riverbank and apartments and along the river street cannot sleep at night. I visited Coptol, for example. At the back where my friend Liv Mason lives, uh, you know, Mason's porches are hanging over the river, um, where my friend Dr. Dublin and others live. And if we do not do something for them there, urgently, all of these investments people have there will be washed away. Um, because it was affected by Erica, and it was also affected dramatically by, um, by um, Maria. So the whole of Coptal runs the risk of being affected if we do not bring in heavy-duty equipment uh, to manage the dredging of the river, redirect the flow of the water to mitigate against disasters. Mr. Skerritt says on dredging the rivers, time is of the essence. He says, for example, there is no time to grant two-year contracts to individuals to get the job done. According to him, we simply don't have the time. We do not have two years to dredge the Rosa River. We do not have two years to cover people's roofs. We do not have two years to, 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 to build, to design, to cost, and to build a number of the edge and the retaining walls for the edge failures across Dominica. So we have to continue to be in an emergen emergency mode for the foreseeable future. Melville Hall River is among those to receive urgent attention. Dredging will also take place in Pishla and Castle Comfort, two of the areas devastated by flood waters during Hurricane Maria. In more news now, a disabled man is facing the struggles of adjusting to an unconducive setting being displaced by Hurricane Maria. Idona John Baptist visited the temporary housing shelter where the River Street man was moved to. You would likely recognize Egbert Joseph, better known as Brecky, an agent for the Dominica National Lotteries. That was Joseph's livelihood, earning an income by commission for the sale of scratch games on Long Lane. Sometime last year, he took ill with a bladder infection, putting a halt to his roadside business. Then Hurricane Maria happened in September, further compromising Joseph's comfort. He sought shelter at the Dominica Grammar School after he was forced to evacuate his roofless River Street home. I live in River Street, just close to the Kenfield bus stop. What happened to your house during Hurricane Maria? Well, the only thing that happened to my house is three governors came out and the river, a river bank came in my home and spoiled up all my convenience that I had. I'm not that sick to say, well, that I'm in the hospital, you know, that kind of thing, you know. I just cripple and I have a bladder infection. That is all. But I am healthy and strong. Joseph recalled having to muster the strength to do what it took to survive that night after the Roseau River overflowed its banks and flooded the city. I was just sitting on a bench on a bench in my home, which the night and I didn't go on my bed and sleep as yet. And when I do feel the water while I was sitting on the bench, it was by my foot. And when I get up from the bench, it was right there. So when I see it was right there, I had to make a great effort to go and sit on, uh, go on, on the sink. A sink like that. Because even in case I didn't do that, I would see myself getting myself junked. I had to remove the mud me alone for four days. Four months later, Joseph is trying to adjust to life in a temporary shelter while he waits for his house to be repaired. Only the problem I have there is the situation inside there, beside me. And the disadvantage that you have being in a wheelchair is that the bathroom facilities, it, um, it's outside, it's out of your room. Yeah, outside my room is a step that I have there. They have there. 
They told me wheelchairs I only there for a while because the place they gave me to use my wheelchair, it haven't complete as yet. So I, they don't tell me when you're going to complete. I usually cook my food myself because I've got no woman living with me and that kind of thing there. Right, I do everything. I go in the bathroom, I bathe, you know, I do everything. I use my toilet, you know. Sometimes I clean when I cannot clean, difficult for me to clean. I ask somebody to help me to do it for me. What sort of efforts has been going on to um, get your house repaired? Well, the problem is that here, uh, I have a family cousin. He is the one that fixing at the front. At the front was very, very old. Grass was growing there and them kind of thing. Joseph is not going it alone as he's also gotten help from other sources. It was a good help from the Red Cross that they give me $1,200 and and twenty dollars so that helped me to to place whatever that i need at my home because i need bed which he have to see if he can see if i can get the bed and the governors you know and other things what or about the, the assistance coming from the state i know that they've provided this temporary see, housing for you the government give me 150 every month and in spite of that they increased it to another $240, but it not for the entire year or year before, just for three months. Yeah. So we got it in December. Okay. And that was a, that's a great help from the government because the government really doing good for the people. Let's talk about your livelihood. What's the future of that? Well, you see, when I, I start doing selling tickets in the National Lottery, and my payment is by commission. The more tickets I can sell for them is the more money that I will get. And it's a good help for me. What that keeps me back off it is just because of my blood infection, you know. I have a last doctor to check. Okay. And because of the hurricane, Mary, I just couldn't go and check it. But I only have to do that when I'll be at my home. Okay. You really want to be home? Yes, I really want to be home. He is hoping to return to his home by February. Idona John Baptist, Channel 5 News. In more news now, an international Seventh-day Adventist organization is compiling a documentary on Dominica Post Maria in order to raise funds for the country's rebuilding efforts. Andrea Louis has that story. Maranatha International is an organization that builds churches, schools, and drills water wells for various countries which request their help. They work closely with the Seventh-day Adventist communities in the country, but their work extends to whoever is in need. Vice President of Marketing for Maranatha Volunteers International, Julie Lee, says the group has visited Dominica before and is keen on helping in its recovery efforts this time around. Dominica is a, actually a special place for Maranatha. We were here after Hurricane David uh, in, I think, in the late 70s and early 80s. We were here doing some building of houses. I believe we helped with some construction of churches and schools. And so when we heard about what had happened here after Hurricane Maria, um, we're not a relief agency. We don't come here immediately in the aftermath of a disaster to do relief or, or provide aid. But what we do um, try to do is once all of that is a little bit settled and people are ready to start talking about rebuilding, people come to us and say, our school was destroyed. Will you come and will you help us rebuild some classrooms? We don't have a church anymore. And, and we really see the church as more than just a place of worship. It's a community building place where people can come together. And so we try to reach out and and um, find where we can help. But people come to us and they know of us and Dominica, the leaders of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, came to us and said, would you be willing to come back and help us? So that's what we're doing here um, this, this week. And we also had people here last week. We'll have people here next week, just looking at what the needs are to see if what we provide is going to fit that need. Several schools and church buildings of the Adventist community in Dominica have been damaged and Maranatha International says it is top on their agenda to repair these structures. Right now, I know that uh, there are four Seventh-day Adventist schools on the island. We're in the process of looking at them and seeing what we can do. Uh, m the majority of the churches of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Dominica 
were badly damaged or completely destroyed. So what we're doing is looking at them, evaluating them. We have our vice president of construction here who's just visiting these locations, seeing if what we offer is going to fit their needs. Another thing that we do is we actually mobilize volunteers uh, all over the world um, to come and help build some of these structures. And we're trying to see if we can find a good fit between what we offer in construction and what the volunteers can do. So that's what we're going to be doing the next couple of weeks. Lee says the fundraising documentary on Dominica Post Maria should be ready for broadcast before the end of February. What we do at uh, Maranatha is that we actually fundraise to our uh, membership in North America. So that's what my job is here this week. I'm here to collect the stories of needs. I've been talking to Dominicans to talk about what is what did you go through during the hurricanes and um, what are you going through now and what does what do these buildings mean to you what do these community centers mean to you and how can we help and so we will collect those stories we'll put them into a 30-minute show that we will broadcast on our channels and then we i write letters we write stories in the magazines and we have about 40,000 people on our mailing list in the united states and we implore them to please help the people of dominica currently our show called maranatha mission stories airs on a Seventh-day Adventist satellite channel that is international called Three Angels Broadcasting Network. We also air on the Hope Channel, which is another network of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. We have a YouTube channel. We are uh, broadcast on our website and also on various um, streaming websites from Apple TV to Roku to Amazon Fire TV. So uh, typically our episodes take about anywhere from two to four weeks to produce. So hopefully you'll see it in the near future. Maranatha Volunteers International was founded in 1969 and is based in Roseville, California with offices in Canada, Latin America, India, and Mozambique. Reporting for Channel 5 News, I am Andrea Louis. In sports now, the Dominica Grammar School and the Dominica State College registered wins in the Sports Division Secondary School's Under-20 Football Championships on Thursday. Kenny Williams reports. On a soggy Benjamins Park, the boys from DGS proved that even in poor playing conditions, they could still perform. In their game against St. Mary's Academy, DGS offered the lethal Chris Lee Kernizan, who contributed half of his team's total score to help them beat St. Mary's Academy six goals to nil. SMA felt the brunt of a tough DGS defense when the winning team was five goals up by the first half. For DGS, Chris Lee Kernizan netted three with single goals from Kieran Maglo, Loic Simon, and Denzel Bedminister. Meantime, in the second game, State College only let one goal slip through their defense, but still tasted victory with a 3-1 win against Isaiah Thomas Secondary. Lemar Irish, Marcellus Bonney, and Jonathan Lawrence ensured that a win was a reality for DSC with one goal each. ITSS Aaron Francis scored the lone goal for his team. The games continue on Tuesday with Grammar School up against St. Mary's Academy in the under-17s at 2 p.m., while at 3.30 p.m., State College will do battle with Goodwill Secondary in the under-20 category. The games are scheduled for Benjamins Park. And it was not the best of days for the leading run scorer in the 2017-2018 Regional 4-day tournament when he was dismissed off the first ball of the day-night match on Thursday. Kenny Williams has more. Winwood Volcano's Devon Smith had an unfortunate setback when he was caught behind off Jeremiah Lewis in the match against Leeward Island's Hurricanes. The veteran left-handed started the match needing 56 to become the fourth batsman in the history of West Indies First Class Championships to score 1,000 runs in a single season and 125 to establish a new single season scoring mark. For this season, Smith has scored 944 runs so far with the nearest contender being Trinidad and Tobago's D. Ramdin, who was on 752 at the end of Thursday's play. Though Delron Johnson hit 48, Ronald Cato 46, and Kevin Hodge made 45 to give the inning some backbone that wasn't enough to give the Volcanoes a more solid start. The opening batsmen found themselves in a precarious position early in the game and left the middle and lower order vulnerable to Hurricane's blistering bowling attack. Volcanoes were finally bowled out for 197 in 56.4 overs. In reply, Hurricanes reached 93 for the loss of three wickets. Devon Thomas supported with an unbeaten 56 and Monson Hodge 31 not out. Sherman Lewis picked up two wickets for 11 runs. 
At the end of the first day's play, Hurricanes trailed by 104 runs with eight wickets remaining in the first innings. M&J Covering is the producer of designed galvanized and galvalume in Dominica. They design to your specifications, color and length, four styles of galvanized and galvalume pre-painted roofing sheets as requested and supply all your galvalume accessories. M&J Covering helps you control spending and reduce waste. At M&J Covering, they are also equipped to build your roof to precise standards anywhere on island. So come to M&J Covering at One Mile in Portsmouth or call 445-5001-275-5003 today. To end the news, the headlines again. All students except those of Trafalgar Primary are currently back in the classroom. 18 million in grant funding for agriculture expected to stimulate increased production. And Grammar School and State College register wins in the under-20 football championships. Feel free to contact us at news at mapping2k4.com. You can also watch our past newscasts on YouTube and tdnentertainment.net. On behalf of the production team, I am Julian Morris. Thank you for watching. Do have a great weekend.